All right, I've waited a while. <clears throat> Let's go see that jerk face. Is there anything else? I guess I can ask around here. Does it say who to ask? Uh, uh, I wonder if I can actually make it up there. Should have more climbing ability now. This person. Maybe I can find some glow worms. Yes, yes, absolutely, I do. There's a cave far to the south of here, just packed with the sinister little creeps. I hate them. They're just ugh, awful. But unfortunately. They're of use sometimes, so I've become quite practiced at catching them. I asked if they might be able to help, and the response is a shudder. Absolutely not, but I can advise you. You'll need to get them down from where they nest on the roof of the cave. To do that, look for sulfurous rocks lying around nearby. Do you want to write this down? I tell them I'm taking mental notes. Well, you want to look for sulfurous rocks and get them wet. They'll start smoking, and that should be enough to knock the glowworms out and net you your awful, slimy quarry. I then put them through more, I offer my thanks, and move along. Okay. So, that's the point of the rocks. Now, was there a way to get down there? That was not... No. Where's my, where's my ride? Actually, yeah, let's try, um, let's try climbing this rope once again. Just for the fun of it. Get up the damn thing. I missed the one that's cl that the closest ish one. Yeah, put on my cool monumental clothes. Wah, 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 wah. Screw it, let's jump to this one. Oh, that was a mistake. Nowhere near <laughs> enough climbing ability to get up there. I was like, I can reach that one, but that's not the problem. <laughs> problem is how far I can climb. <laughs> I can teabag in this game.
the hell? I don't think I'm gonna make it any further. <laughs> No. Shoot. Yeah, it's not climbing ability, it's hitting angles. Alright, well, anyways. Tricky, 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 tricky. further than I expected.
Twenty five. I didn't even notice them up on the ceiling. I thought those were just stalactites. Is that not? Oh, they're the things on the stalactite. Hey. Gave me this quest. Also, kind of annoying that it, it doesn't point you. It would give you a waypoint, but it doesn't point you exactly where it is. And you know, some games it's fine. You can figure it out real quick. But this one's just like talk to this person. But it gives you like a general direction, but also well, everyone looks the same. And, Oh, okay, it was, yeah, it was the lady with the creature that tried to eat me. I can't remember this area. Is there a kid in here? Who are you? Oh, right. Here. You didn't do much for me. I don't know why I'm giving you money. Tell Citra I have the glowworms for her. You do? You know, I'd have forgotten I even asked you. I must have been a little distracted. I hand the glowworms over. Uh. Thank you for these. Nosy will be eating even better than me tonight. Here's a merchant's badge as your reward. That looks like it's supposed to be her voice, but it's not. I say goodbye to Citra. Oh, great. Thanks. A merchant's bag. badge. I totally needed that. Let's go and see if this dude is ready. Person. See, look, it's pointing me here and not. seeing me, fear all but leaps with excitement. Sable, I've been waiting for you. I decoded the final inscription. You were right. It was a game. A race. And you completed it exactly as intended. Do you know what that means? I won? Oh, you definitely won. Or, more accurately, Simoon won. 
barely registers with me that she uses Simoon, despite never being introduced. I don't get a chance to bring it up before she's going on. There's a prize, a real one. Once you complete the race, the pillars reveal the text. Translate the text and you get... Bike parts. Incredible ones. Older in their design than any I've ever seen. Perfectly elegant. You must try them, Sable. You must. Sick. I can fit the parts onto your bike, if you'd like to ride it now. Yes, please. Okay, let's take a look. <laughs> this, I totally saw this part. This part was on a bike um, in the town, so not, uh, not super rare. This bike. Fear shakes her head and shrugs, but it's in the nice way. The way you do it, something so grand and so beautifully awe-inspiring that you can't help but feel small and sort of casually useless in its shadow. This bike is wonderful. I tell her I agree and thank you for the opportunity to ride in an ancient race. I also explain that in playing their old game, I felt more connected to the past than I did hearing the driver, or hearing the drier bits of history. That's great. I mean, I mean it. That's... I don't know if I'm just a romantic or something, but I always have such a hard time connecting to the past without connecting to the people. Strange for a machinist, isn't it? I think about it. I suppose it is strange for a machinist some, somehow, but I find it comforting too. There really is room for all kinds behind all masks. I want you to keep the bike and bring it into a new era. Let it see how the world change while it was sleeping. I don't ride much myself nowadays, so it'll be in good hands with you. And I get to be smug around the other machinists, which is all the reward I really need. I thank Fear for her skill and generosity, and head off. Makes a different noise too. How come my uh, outfit's not lighting up blue? Uh, what is the same monumental? What's in this thing? Don't care about that. Don't care about that. Shiny masks. Oh, that was a climber, right? Um, how many climber badges do I have? I have two. Ah, I suppose I can try that. Let's see.
Should have tried that a long time ago. It's way easier. Fastest way up here. I don't remember seeing this. Is the shy? Yeah. Get ya. I didn't see this either. Oh, whatever. I don't think I saw this. Plant Weaver Rachel. Oh, hello. What is this place? These baths, they are ancient. I never even heard of them before. They seem to use the flow from the hot waters that are inside the rocks and circulate them through the baths. I imagine this as a bathhouse. People must have come from all over the rest. All over the rest and recover. <laughs> Who are you? My name is Rachel. I'm a plant weaver. I uh, never heard of a plant weaver before. Is that a tiny tree inside a glass orb? We nurture plants, whether a struggling rejoir in the wild or flourishing sporling of melancholy mushrooms in a cultivated garden. Without plants, life would cease to exist. I came with the climber and hunter, but I think I'll stay here. There's something special about this place. I think some very unusual flora would thrive here. I have never seen some of the things growing here. See you around. Okay. Mm. Boo. sideways like eats up your stamina way faster. Where was 
with that. Real shit. <laughs> okay then. I try not to look too tired as I hand the eggs over to Dylan, who seems positively delighted. Would you look at that? I hate to admit it, but you might be a better climber than me. At least a better bird scarer. Birds tremble before me. Hmm. I suppose I should get back to ZB. Before I do, you deserve this. That's like no climb I've ever seen. Certainly not by an amateur. Dylan hands me a climbing badge, and I thank him for it. See you around, glider, and thanks. I say goodbye to Dylan. Do this mask. How did she know she was supposed to shove her hand in the face? <laughs> Climbing a bouldering, probably, huh? What a dumb mask. Okay, let's go home. So smooth. As the Ibex camp draws closer, the imagined threshold between home and gliding is palpable. It reminds me of coming in from a sandstorm, so fierce that the grains have whipped through the air and through your clothes. You peel off the layers of sand-beaten fabric and marvel at the dust on your skin, the bits that manage to get through despite every precaution. 
And though you feel so grateful to be home and so comforted by the safety of the indoors, you can't help but smile, nostalgic, as you wash the sand away. What an adventure you've had, and it was only for you. Am I ready to choose my mask now? There's no going back if I do. I'm ready. But am I really ready? Definitely ready. Yes, enough doubt. I know what I want, and it's time to make my choice. This mask. Should speak to Jaddy when I'm ready. I'm ready for the choosing ceremony. I greet Cizo. How do you do, clan child? Talk about Samoon. How was your companion? It would have been lonely without Samoon. Of course, the desert can be a desolate and sparse place. Traveling with a partner is the only way to keep the mind at peace. What will happen to Samoon now? Well, it's almost time for Saima's gliding. Samoon will likely accompany her across the dunes. I feel a pang of melancholy as I think about losing Samoon. It had to happen one day. Nobody truly owns a bike in the Ibexi, but is merely accompanied by one. I am grateful to have at least had that blessing. Ah. I met Lot. A lot of your machinist friends. I tell Cizo I met a lot of her friends on my travels. I know this and hope they were good to you and to Samoon. I tell her that they were and she seems to take a bit of pride in that, which is rare to see in Samoon. Some really great machinists out there. I like them a lot. Do you think I should choose the machinist mask? She crosses her arms and takes time to think. Some will tell you that the life of machinist is lonely. It isn't. And not only because we are assigned to clans, who so often welcome us into their number. No, it's, it's more. It's because we are never truly alone. As you were never truly alone on your gliding, you went with Simoon. I think of the moments where I sat looking at some map or hiding from some foul weather or trying to get over a sudden bout of very powerful homesickness and Simoon gave a little hum that I could feel up through my legs. <laughs> you have a very special bike, Sable. I nod along with Ciso. As you return, I sat on the tower and heard Simoon's purr grow to a roar, and in it the traces of those whose work has helped give her shape. She speaks with many voices now, and that resonance. Ciso seems to shiver. It's why we do what we do. So if that appeals, then I can only recommend it. I thank Cizo for her counsel. It's <laughs> it's kind of a... Is it still Samoon ship of Theseus situation where I've replaced all the parts? <laughs> Actually, at some points, replacing all the parts all at one time. So not even a ship of Theseus situation, really, but... Is it Simoon still? <laughs> Anyways. Don't care about you. Don't, oh. Something you want to discuss with Driss? See, they didn't have freaking talky bits above their head, so how am I supposed to know? How's the clan been? I asked Driss how it's been managing the clan while I was gone. Chaotic as ever. Which I think you should be pretty happy about. Ask Driss why he thinks 
I'd want that for him. Because that means I, it wasn't you. Well, of course it wasn't. Out of respect, I decided not to tell Triss, Driss that it may in, indeed be him who was at the heart of so much chaos. Instead, I simply assert it very clearly wasn't me. Well, you never know. You're still young, and youth usually comes with its share of chaos. Or at least it should. Anyhow, you are off the proverbial hook. How nice for me. Thinking about choosing the Scrapper's Mask. The Scrapper's Mask? You? Really? I tell you, Sable, I wouldn't have pegged you for it, but you've always had quite the imagination, haven't you? More of an inner monologue. Yes, well, I think that's a good trait for a scrapper. You need to be able to see the beauty in the scraps, you know? And that takes a very creative brain. I think a lot of folks see scrappers and think they're just rubbish pickers, you know? But if you can look at something old and dream up something new, then I think you've got it, and I'd support you every scrap of the way. I thank Driss for his advice. I'd like to relitigate the sand cutter incident. I asked Driss once and for all if on that fateful day of my gliding he actually had actually forgotten to help out with my bike and if the test ride on the sand cutter was a sly cover up. He cocks his head. What are you talking about? You know what I'm talking about. But he shakes his head. No idea. I remember the whole bike thing going very smoothly. Plus, he took that sand cutter out, and you didn't even get a, a little bit on fire. Great stuff. I accept Triss's response. I suppose even the gliding cannot be the answer to all things. F that dude. Ugh. Being back with the Ibexi is more comfortable than I expected. I think I thought the gliding would change every part of me, and that I would come home different. Perhaps more mature, or more jaded, or at least able to grasp more of Driss's jokes or Hillel's poetry. The actual change is more subtle, and it's that, somehow, despite spending so much time discovering the world beyond, I've never felt more like a part of this clan. And it isn't about being Ibexi, or which mask I ultimately choose. Simply that I no longer feel so behind everyone, or like they know some grown-up secret I yearn to understand. I feel embraced, wholly as a person I am. Sable. So now we've heard your stories, or at least the ones you're happy to tell. That means it's nearly time now. Jaddy sigh is contented. I suspect that she was more concerned with my experience of the gliding than the grand choice at its end. For that I am grateful. Are you ready to choose? Am I? Maybe I should choose the Ibex mask. I tell Jaddy that, after everything, I'm thinking about choosing the Ibex mask and staying with the clan. You'd be welcome to stay with us. I know there's a lot of pressure to choose something else, so much that it sometimes feels boring to choose the very mask you started with. But all of us were gliders once, and certainly not all of us were Ibexi when we started. We are those who walk in hoofsteps and seek our freedom in the desert. We know movement, the flow of migration, the joy of changing skies and shifting sands. We embrace difference and celebrate connection all at once. I'm proud to be Ibexi, and you may be too. I thank Jaddy for putting it so nicely. She leans in for a whisper. And if you aren't, you can still come visit. I won't tell. Ready to choose. I tell Jaddy I am ready. She nods. I won't keep you, Sable. If you know what you want, then all I desire is to learn what that is and celebrate it with you. I'm allowed to be excited too, aren't I? She chuckles. Whenever you're ready, proceed to the temple. Oh my god, with this. What do you want, kid? Hey, Sable. Strange how children change so much over a short period. Hilaria has grown, but she's she'll always be a child to me. I do a lot of climbing out there. Oh? How high did you go? Did you touch a cloud? If I had a gliding stone, I would definitely touch a cloud. 
I reveal that I got the climbing mask. Valeria seems to vibrate with excitement and jealousy. I can't believe it. You have to choose it. You will choose it, right? I mean, why wouldn't you? That would just be silly. I don't think I'll get a word in here, so I just let Alaria effusively speak at me for a while, enjoying her passion for something so particular. Being a climber is a pretty solitary experience, for the most part, mostly foraging for things that grow in the higher climbs, fixing or salvaging from ships in high places. But the sights you see, the places you get to go, they'll be like a continual gliding at times. Will I be comfortable at those heights without the gliding stone? No. You've grown. Ilaria subconsciously stands a little taller and prouder as I say the words. I can't help but smile remembering all the times adults would say, Oh, how you've grown to me as a child. Well, you've not grown at all. I haven't just grown, I can climb way higher now. Seki hates it. It's great. Not all growth is external. Feels like a hollow, defensive statement, but it's also true. Ilaria doesn't look convinced. Simon will be leaving for her gliding soon, but at least you'll be back now. I don't have the heart to tell her that I might not stay with the Ibexi. There's still time to decide, so I hold back. Who was Simon again? <laughs> My child, welcome home. Have you been taking care of yourself? You look rather bony. Are you well? Seki fusses over me. She would always look for reasons to care for us. That's no good at all. Not at all. We'll have to fix you up with some of Jaddy's lamb stew. I am involuntarily salivating at the thought. It's good to be back. Where have you been? After you left, we headed to some older Ibexi campsites, places we used before you were born. Going back, it was beautiful. The land flourishes when you leave it for so long. Each place transformed with life and abundant with things to forage since we were last there. Once we leave the Eeyore, we will not be coming back for a long time. It needs time to recover from nourishing us. Interesting. Nomadicness. Hilal. Oh, Sable. So good to have you home. I've thought about you so much, just imagining all the excitement. Every time we plastic past a cliffside, I thought, I bet Sable's just hovering everywhere. What do you think of the climber's mask? They light up straight away, which I think I should have expected. A brilliant mask. There's a lot of really good masks, obviously, but climbing? If you ask me, the worst part about the gliding's end is losing the perpetual stone. To hover forever, to fear nothing from heights or falls. That is an uncommon freedom. Then you have to let it go? To me, climbing is the closest thing one gets to keeping that connection between oneself and the perpetual. Just as a stone, it banishes fear and risk. Let you explore the world's great vertical spaces with knowledge and fortitude. I think it's a great mask. It probably would have been my choice, had I not fallen so much in love with the Ibexi. I thank Hillel for their thoughts, and again for the stone they gave me so long ago. Have you heard of L Lore the Fabulous? Oh, of course I have. Not much for travel, you know, but not two years ago, I made a special trip to Ikria just to see her. Why? I tell Hillel I met her out in the desert, and that we spent a whole evening talking about life and poetry. I add that I think I may have inspired some original work. That's amazing. So you think... Sorry, I'm so excited. So you think it's possible that next time I see Elor, she might actually read a poem that you inspired? I say yes, that it's quite possible. Now that is a gliding. Who cares what mask you choose? You got to hover around the world and you inspired Lore the Fabulous to write a new poem. If I were you, I'd put it on my retirement mask because I'd be done. We laugh together and it feels really, really good. Retirement mask? I got a feeling retirement's not an option here. Umar. I don't remember the last time I heard Umar speak. Maybe to yell a warning, but never to converse. It takes me a moment to think of something to reply. Did you miss me? He missed a little grunt and what sounds like a chuckle. I think that means he missed me. How have you been? 
Umar shrugged silently. I think that's all I'm gonna get from him on that. Alright, fine, Umar, whatever. Let's finish this. Where was the temple? I don't even remember. Is that the temple? No, oh, that was the temple. <sighs> Break my legs. Yeah, it's the first time that's worked. All the masks are on the uh, little statues. <gasps> I could choose the whale mask. Totally choosing the whale mask. Didn't think that was an option. Hey, look, it's like, you could talk to these, but not the other ones. The atomic mask. Yeah, let's do it. On the downside, I may be a few hundred years late for the job. But on the plus side, I look really good in it. Still, probably not enough to turn into a whole calling. Should I really choose this mask? Yeah, dude. Choose it. I pick up the atomic mask. I guess I'll have to carve my own path. I'll figure out the details later. Gives me cancer. <laughs> it looks stupid. It, look, it does look pretty stupid with this outfit. Oh. 
<sighs> yeah. Yeah, so I guess I've made my thoughts pretty well known. Cool concept. Lots of cool bits. Um, definitely some things I would have done different or made sure worked better. <laughs> but, uh, wow, that was quick credits, wasn't it? Oh, all right. Hmm. That it?